What's up guys, it's Weston here. So today I'm gonna to be reviewing the MSI Interceptor DS4200 keyboard and the DSB1 mouse. Now these come bundled with the Aegis 3 I recently reviewed, which will be linked in the description. Now the keyboard is not available as of yet, but it will be available soon. The mouse you can pick up on Amazon already. But anyway, let's see if this gaming mouse and keyboard are any good. So let's get into that right now. So we'll start with the DS4200 first and it is pretty solid. The design is definitely keeping in with MSI's product range and it fits in well. It's one of those keyboards that is a look at me gamer style keyboard and it achieves this with sloping but angular corners, sharp edges and a real obviously glaring MSI logo which is illuminated. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I personally am not a huge fan of the look at me gamer peripherals but that's just my personal preference. Now the main body is a combination of glossy black on those accents and also a slightly textured black finish to the main body. The wrist rest also has a textured pattern on it which fits in pretty well with the overall design. The intercept is also water repellent which is fantastic for those clumsy amongst us. The keyboard is a standard 105 layout with a full size number pad so if you want to get some work done you can. Now let's face it though when we're gaming we're not really focusing too much on that. The keyboard is on the larger side coming in at 472.68 by 207.12 by 38.95 which is on the larger side so if you've got a compact setup then it might take up a lot of room on your desk. The keyboard also weighs in at a fairly heavy 1.065 kilogram. Onto the RGB next and it is rather lovely. The illumination fills out each area of the keyboard and the effect is really nice. I love how seamlessly the colours blend together to create this effect. The backlight is also nicely bright and fills out the illuminated areas really well. I have noticed on some cheaper keyboards the backlight is not full and doesn't create as nice a look but this achieves it really well. The downside is you are stuck with the spectrum colour so there is no matching it to your setup. Luckily you can turn this off by pressing NF and the page down button if you don't like it. You can also change the breathing speed by pressing the dedicated key located between the FN and control button at the bottom of the keyboard. This creates a really cool effect but to be honest I prefer it static. The keys are a precision tactile with a mechanical field membrane switch. Now this is supposed to mimic the feel of a mechanical switch without the extra noise. Now it does a decent job of doing this but it doesn't feel as tactile as a Cherry MX switch but it is pretty close. The travel distance is also pretty decent too and it doesn't require much force to register a keystroke or to fully actuate. Here's a quick comparison between this and a full mechanical keyboard. The keys are nicely spaced out and have a great smooth texture to them and typing is a nice experience. It's not the most fluid and I did notice I made more typing mistakes on this than I do my usual mechanical keyboard. Also to note is that if you're in the UK the pound sign is completely missing unless I've just overlooked it and also other icons and stuff are in different locations so it just takes a bit of time to get used to. But that might just be the sample I have here. You also have an array of media keys which can be used in conjunction with FN to work. These are located F1 through to F8. You also have a dedicated gaming key which is F11 and pressing this prevents uh, returning to Windows if you accidentally knock it. Finally the keyboard has anti-ghosting which is up to 20 keys and is perfect for those FPS and MMO style games. Speaking of gaming it's pretty solid, I don't game too much on keyboard but I found it pretty responsive and quick. It's probably not as responsive and as quick as my mechanical keyboard but it's definitely great as long as you're not doing stuff like competitive gaming. Onto the integrated wrist rest next and I quite like it. The texture is grippy but it's not too rough. It is made from plastic but it's decent quality plastic. It doesn't feel rough when I'm moving around the keyboard and all in all it is a solid wrist rest. Also I've noticed my wrists don't feel as strained as they do with my usual keyboard that doesn't have a wrist rest. However if you don't like wrist rest unfortunately this is non removable but I have enjoyed the typing experience on this and I've actually found myself not wanting to go back to a keyboard without one. Quickly onto build next and like mentioned it is made from predominantly plastic but it feels solid. There is no major flex when typing and it feels well grounded. 
There is a little flex, however, if you try to, but you don't really do that with a keyboard anyway. All in all, it feels solid and well put together. The cable next is braided and feels pretty great. It measures in at approximately two meters and it feels solid. I can't really fault it. The underside next has some really large rubber feet which do a great job of preventing the keyboard from sliding around on your desk. Also there is two levels of adjustment on here which is okay for me but it might not be great for some and on here you obviously can have it flat or slightly angled upwards. Onto the mouse next and this is pretty affordable coming in at £20. It has a similar design to the keyboard with more angular edges and it is a decent looking mouse. It also features red illumination which looks great in a black and red setup but not much else. The black finish is nice but it picks up a lot of grease and dirt easily and it doesn't clean up that nicely either. The thumb rests are made from plastic and feel okay, they provide a solid grip when gaming but it's not, like I said, as nice feeling as uh, some softer touch ones. Button placement is good if you've got average size hands, so yeah, can't complain there. The click feels nice, but a little bit lifeless and not too responsive. It's fairly accurate, and the grooves in it do make it nice to hold, and it is surprisingly comfortable to use on a day-to-day -day basis. The scroll on the wheel feels about average, it's decently smooth, but nothing to really write home about. The individual steps in the scroll are quite large too, making precision scrolling a bit of an issue. The max DPI on this mouse is 1600 which for me is on the low side. I prefer at least 4000 DPI for my usage and the low DPI can make gaming a bit of an issue especially if you're in a faster paced game. On the plus side the inclusion of weights is a good thing and you can tailor the feel of your mouse to how you prefer it. So it comes with an additional 2 gram of weight and it does make a big difference. The glide on the mouse is fairly good and one of the better points of the mouse. So as long as you've got a good smooth mouse mat it glides really nice. If only the DPI was higher it would have been much better overall. And there you have it guys, that is everything you need to know about this keyboard and mouse. Now, for £50 MRSP when it comes out later on this year, again I will link it in the description when it is live, I think it is a good keyboard, it's solidly made, the keys are nice, they're not quite as tactile or responsive as full mechanical switches, but they're still pretty impressive, It's like I said it's well made, it looks nice, it fit in with a lot of setups, especially if you're into your RGB, so yeah for its price of around £50 when it comes out, I think it is a solid keyboard. Then we get on to the mouse and that is about £20 at the minute and I think it's pretty decent. Yes, it's a little bit plastic here and the DPI Max isn't that great but it's got some good additions like the weight and also it glides really nice and smoothly and it looks pretty nice too. So yes, I think these are some great peripherals and if you've just bought an Aegis 3 then having these that come with them means that you're not going to need to upgrade your mouse and keyboard for a long time. If you're just looking to buy these separately, you're going to have to wait to pick up the keyboard. But the mouse, I would suggest taking a look at it, but you might be able to find some alternatives that better suit your needs. So that is pretty much it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. More reviews, more PC stuff, and all that great stuff coming soon. So thanks again, and I will see you all on the very next one.